Hey guys, I'm Chris Buck, and a very warm welcome to Friday Fretworks. And this week, we're going to be running through my rig. So here at the moment in Snake Mode in Studios in South Wales, currently recording the Cardinal Black album. We've been in here cumulatively about two weeks, I guess, at this point. Um, and the last few days especially have been really focused on tracking guitar, so I thought it makes sense to kind of try and talk you guys through exactly what it is that I've been using without exactly talking you through what it is I've been using because we had a bit of an incident earlier in which my Pro Reverb, my Fender Pro Reverb, that's been a, kind of a mainstay in my rig now for a very long time, decided to go up in smoke after the best part of a fortnight of uh, kind of running at full pelt at all times. So highly surprising. So... We currently have my Fuchs clean machine that you can see behind me there as a uh, very worthy replacement. Um, but I'm not going to present this video so much as kind of uh, hand it over. Hand over the reins to Mr. Sam Williams, bass player extraordinaire. Um, definitely wouldn't go that far. Who's going to kind of, um, yeah, do the kind of bulk of the talking. Um, so, Sammy, take it away. Thank you, Chris. Right, Thank please, you very much. Keep it uh, clean. Keep it clean. Um, Friday Fretworks, yeah, family yeah. friendly. Nice to see everybody. How are we doing? <laughs> Ed Winchester. So, Ed Winchester. Um, Where are we starting? Chuck it back. Chuck it back. Uh, keep the mic away. <laughs> the microwave. This is a microwave. Keep the microphone away from you, I think. So, as I said, different amps than usual, unfortunately. So, not wholly reflective of, I guess, either my live rig or the sound of the album. So, I do wonder what the point is of this video. But, uh, Foose Clean Machine, as I said, I've kind of used that for a good number of years now. Near an infinite amount of headroom. Zilla 1x12 with an EV12L in it. It's just... As I said, it's headroom for days, it's just loud and it's punchy and it's clean and it's everything you want from an amp of that style. Very much kind of in the sort of steel string singer vein, I guess, that kind of dumbly thing. Um, the other amp then that you can see over there, if I move away from the light for a second, is the Victory Copper Deluxe. Um, very much Victory's take on a kind of Vox AC30 kind of thing. Just does that sound really, really nicely, especially <laughs> ordinarily. Uh, with the Pro Reverb, fills out the mid-range beautifully. It's a very strident, very kind of mid-range heavy amp, um, which then coupled with the uh, the top and lows, especially of the Pro Reverb, and it's silver face fender, so it's a little bit more kind of traditionally mid-scooped, I guess. Kind of fills in that frequency uh, frequency range, I should say. Ironically, the Zilla and the uh, Fuchs together are a little bit more kind of mid-focused anyway, I guess. So, um, again, not wholly repre representative or reflective, but um, this is what uh, they sound like clean. clean. <laughs> So you've got the Victor especially, very slightly on the edge of breakup. Um, but yeah, they do make a nice pairing, but I think it's kind of probably slightly more overall strident mid-range than I would get ordinarily with the Pro Reverb. But um, so moving on, um, this is no premier guitar, is it? Let's be honest. Um, moving on, I guess, to the pedal board then, or uh, well, the guitar. First and foremost, needless to say, it's my custom Yamaha Rev Start. If you've watched Friday Frightworks or me for any length of time, you'll probably be familiar with this. Um, Yamaha were kind enough to make it for me a little while ago. Flew out to LA to pick it up um, from their kind of headquarters in Calabasas. It's just a beautiful guitar. It served me incredibly well. It's all over the record. It was all over the tour that we did with Miles Kennedy a few weeks back, or a few months back, I should say. It's going to be all over pretty much everything we do, I imagine. Um, it's just a great sounding guitar. Two P90s, two controls, very simple. It's worth saying that when I got it, I wired the second control, uh, what would ordinarily be a tone control, as a second volume. 
um, but that's now back to being a tone control. Uh, it was nice in theory, but just that being that little bit further away didn't make it wholly practical for adjusting the uh, the bridge pickup volume. So that's back to being a master tone. Uh, moving on to the pedal board. Robsy, if you want to kind of uh, shimmy around a little bit. Lots going on here, as usual, all being controlled by the Gig Rig G2. Um, obviously that kind of loop switcher at the bottom. Um, we've got the top, we've got the underneath as well. Of course, this is a Schmidt Array, I want to say S450, but I might be wrong. Um, it's the one that's the width of the G2. A um, couple of pedals underneath, which I shall talk you through in a sec. Uh, but yeah, let's get some sounds going. So, um, Sammy, back over to you, brother. So, as I said, clean tone. <laughs> Thank you. First pedal in the chain um, is, uh, or first pedal in the switcher, I should say, is the Snouse Black Box Overdrive. Someone's been practicing. <laughs> Not recently. Um, glorious sound in overdrive, very much Marshall Bluesbreaker inspired. Um, just a great sounding pedal. Second in the loop, on well, the second loop, I should say, is the great Eastern uh, effects, I want to say. Uh, small speaker overdrive, very much based on a kind of, imagine like a kind of cranked Fender champ, I guess. Small amp being absolutely cranked. I've got it set a little bit more subtly, I guess. It's almost like a very light fuzz. Fantastic sounding pedal all over the Cardinal Black album. Sounds a little bit like this. Beautiful sounding pedal, really cool. Next, we have the Mythos Molnia. They take on a kind of clon based circuit, I guess. Does that clon thing really nicely. Uh, very kind of mid focused overdrive. Uh, sounds a little bit like this. That together with the black box, get a lot of use together. Kind of staple, relatively dirty rhythm tone. Um, in regard to overdrive, the main pedal is undoubtedly the Analog Man King of Tone. Sounds a little bit like this. Again, kind of loosely inspired by Marshall Bluesbreaker, I guess. Fairly mid-focused, but not ludicrously kind of pinched or mid-pushed, I guess. Just a great, great sound in overdrive. Um, next, we have the uh, the Jackson Audio Bloom compressor and boost combined. I tend to use it uh, more as a compressor, to be honest, uh, but it's nice having that extra boost there uh, should it be needed. So if we kick that in... Great sounding pedal, does exactly what it says on the tin. Uh, moving over, EP booster, that's my kind of uh, overall kind of solo boost, I guess. Top right of the pedal board. Um, set entirely dependent, to be honest, on whatever it calls for. It's a little bit of a kind of um, nudge to the sound man, invariably, if you feel you're being lost in the mix out front. 
Um, so having overall control over how loud solos get is uh, quite a nice option. Just a great overall tone shaper, to be honest. I'm kind of half thinking about getting one of those just to stick at the front of the rig and have it always on. Uh, next in the switcher, we have the Moore Trellicopter. Set pretty much exclusively for the start of Tell Me How It Feels, at least the live version sounds a little bit like this. Does that kind of choppy Tom Morello thing, um, at least for the live version of Tell Me How It Feels. Next up, we have Catlin Bread's Echo Rec. Um, fantastic sounding pedal, again, very much based on that old Binson Echo Rec from back in the day. Um, sounds like this. kind of typical sort of rhythmic, repeated, uh, kind of patterned delay. Um, out of the Catlin bread, and straight into the Line 6 HX Stomp XL. Covers a huge amount of kind of space. Uh, not space is the wrong word. Uh, ground, I guess. Covers a fair amount of space as well, let's be honest. But um, covers a huge amount of ground in terms of multi-effects, all of which it does incredibly well. So first up, um, we've got the Harmonic Trem. Really impressive, um, especially given had a chance to kind of AB that with a couple of um, real kind of harmonic trams recently, and it gets very impressively close. Uh, next up, a couple of different delays. I'm just going to cycle through those. Um, sounds a little bit like this. And then the last delay, or the last kind of um, two pedals really worth mentioning in regard to the main board itself are going to be the Guru's Echo Sex. Again, very much inspired by that Echo Rec thing, but a kind of single head version of it. Um, that's, to be honest, kind of main delay at the moment um, in place of the Buna, Donna Prince Buna, which is being uh, repaired at present. Uh, sounds a little bit like this. Of course, last but not least, um, we have the Thorpey Field Marshal. Fantastic sounding fuzz pedal, uh, which tends to get use as the, uh, the solo sounder tell me how it feels. Um, not so much in isolation, tend to either stack it with the uh, Snice Black Box or the King of Tone or even the Molnir, anything kind of very, kind of relatively mid push, really kind of fattens out that mid range. Uh, in isolation and then stacked with the Black Box, sounds like this.
Sounds a bit like that. Uh, moving over uh, to the extension of the main board, which is a relatively, re uh, relatively recent addition. First and foremost, we have the Universal Audio Astra. Um, in this case, going back and forth between uh, a tremolo sound and a chorus sound for a track called Where'd You Go, uh, on the chorus setting, sounds a little bit like this. Moving over, probably my new favourite delay pedal, um, the RE202 Space Echo by Boss. Um, obviously a recreation of that original uh, Space Echo from back in the day. Pretty fully featured to be honest, has all the uh, controls and a couple of other things that the original Space Echo didn't have. It's a hell of a lot of fun in a live context as well, really tweakable. Obviously having the three foot switches just gives you that capacity to sort of um, do some fairly cool and crazy stuff. Um, sounds a little bit like this. And as you've just heard, the Golden Reverberator, also by Universal Audio, um, gets a hell of a lot of use for the kind of more sort of ambient kind of stuff, I guess. In particular, this track called Jump In um, from our first EP, also be on the album. Sounds a little bit like this. Got a little tail off. Um, in regard to pedals and sounds, that's pretty much it. Um, in regard to the rest of the rig, obviously got the guitar right. These are the guitars that I've been using um, in the studio this week. Um, it's a kind of fairly changing, uh, yeah, kind of feast of guitars, to be honest. A lot happening. Um, let's start from the start. Sam, if you can hold the microphone a sec. Let's have a look. It's going close, boys. So, first up, um, we're getting used on a couple of tracks. Got. Uh, the Yamaha Trans Acoustic, obviously got a lot of tricks up its sleeve um, in regard to some onboards, uh, reverbs and choruses and all that kind of cool stuff, but at heart it's just a really well built, fantastic sounding acoustic guitar. Um, next up, probably one of my favourite ac acquisitions of recent years, it's the Shinichi Ubukata ES355 by Gibson. Um, probably more commonly associated with the uh, Shame Shame video, uh, the Foo Fighters track. Um, it's the guitar that Dave Grohl is using to dig a grave in that track, um, and Smash Into Bits, a fantastic sounding guitar, obviously got the very tone, that actually got use um, on a Cardinal Black track recently on the records, um, which inadvertently had the very tone turns to position uh, two, but I didn't realise until we kind of all got the bottom of why it sounded so cool and quite unique. So that's that. Next up, a guitar you probably will have seen quite a lot of on Friday Fretworks recently, see, it's a good reason to get strap locks. Um, it is my Panucci Gold Top, 
currently with five strings, having snapped one in the course of a solo yesterday. Um, just a fantastic sounding guitar chambered and two of the best uh, PAF recreations or replicas or whatever or um, Angelo's version of PAFs that I've ever heard. Just a gorgeous sounding guitar. Um, next up, and again, a guitar some of you may recognize um, with a strap just about as loud as its paint job. It's my 62. Obviously bought it at auction. I'll link to the kind of full story of that if you want to check that out. It's quite an interesting one. And last but not least, again, a relatively new purchase um, in the shape of this um, double-bound Telecaster that I bought uh, from a good mate recently. Fantastic sounding Telecaster. Um, got more of a kind of Strat-inspired pickup in the neck, which sounds pretty unique. Um, and again, it's had a hell of a lot of use on the Cardinal Black album. It's just a great sounding guitar. Last but not least, the stuff that nobody ever really talks about, to be honest, is how I cart my gear about. Um, pedal boards actually get quite a lot of questions about how I transport the pedal board, whether I use the Schmidt Array case or whether I use something different. Pedalboard goes in this Pella case, um, or Pelican 1610. I do believe there is a reference number if anyone needs or wants to get one. Um, and then guitars go around in either a variety of uh, hard cases, depending on the situation or scenario. Or more recently, my mono gig bags, uh, both backpack and guitar case. Just an incredibly comfortable, secure way of transporting these things about. Obviously, they're fairly, uh, if not financially, kind of uh, valuable, so much as sentimentally valuable, at least to me. So just taking taking care of everything. Amps, in this case, are mic'd with two AKG 414s, vintage ones, I do believe. Um, and there is a rather special uh, Neumann U47 as a room mic today, uh, courtesy of a good friend of mine, Vintage Tone Factory, if you want to check him out. Cheers to Ed for the loan of all the incredible gear that he's uh, been kind enough to donate for the recording of this album so far. So um, that's pretty much it. As ever, thank you very much for watching. Sorry, it's a little bit of an ad hoc kind of on-location video this week. But um, as ever, thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell icon, you know what to do. And I shall see you next week for uh, a slightly more planned episode of Friday Fredworks. Cheers, guys. Take care. See you soon.